You know, the DVX200 has dozens of recording formats that it can record in. It really can be overwhelming when you look at the combinations of frame rates, frame sizes, recording formats, recording wrappers. It's there's a lot to consider. So I'm going to try to help demystify this and, and help guide you through how you choose a recording format. So go to the system mode menu. This is where we're going to make all these decisions in the system mode menu. Next, we go into the rec mode menu, and this is where we determine what type of file format you're going to be recording. You can be recording a QuickTime movie, which is generally most appropriate for if you're going to be editing on an Apple computer. Or are you going to record an MP4 file, which is generally more usable on a Windows system? Or are you going to use AVC HD? Now, AVC HD, it's a very low bandwidth recording format. If you need extremely long recording times and you only need high def or standard def, AVC HD may be an option. There are a couple of things you can only do in AVC HD. For example, 720p mode. The camera has a low bandwidth 72060p mode, AVC HD PM mode, so you can record 720p. Or if you need to record standard def, that's only available in AVC HD. So generally, unless you need super long recording times, or standard def, or 720p, if you don't need those, I don't really recommend going with ABC HD. Let's use the camera for what it was really designed for, which is the move and MP4 file formats. I'll choose MP4 here. And then you go into the actual rec format. Now you have to make two decisions. How big of a frame do you want? And what frame rate do you want to run at? You have a wide variety of recording bit rates too. You can record at 200 megabits, 100 megabits, or you can record at 50 megabits. So how do you determine among those? Generally, the bigger number is better. The 50 megabits is pretty good. The 100 megabits is a lot better. The 100 megabits is pretty much a sweet spot when shooting 1080 60p. It gives you the best efficiency in the codec, but 100 megabits is only available in 1080 60p. The high quality option when you're shooting 24p or 30p is 200 megabits. 1080 60p, the 100 megabit is a great choice. For 24p and 30p, I definitely prefer the 200 megabits over the 50. 50 is pretty good. And if 50 is all you need, it's very efficient and gives you long recording times. 1080 is also available in a variety of frame rates, whether you want the film look at 24p or 23.976 frames per second, or if you want the reality, the live look of 60p or for interlaced video 60i, or if you want kind of a hybrid in between, 30p. 30p kind of sort of looks like the film look, but a little smoother. And it looks sort of like live video, but it's a little more stuttery. So it's kind of in between. Generally, I don't use 30p much. I recommend if you want a film looking program, go for straight for 24p. And if you want the reality look for news or live coverage or sports or something, go straight for 60p. There's also a choice of 60i. That's if you're delivering to an interlaced broadcaster and they're requesting interlaced footage, the camera can do it. But I wouldn't limit myself to interlaced if I didn't have to. I'd rather shoot in a progressive format. You can always convert a progressive format to interlaced if you need to. But if you shoot interlaced in the first place, you can't really convert that to progressive. You'll just lose information if you try to do that. So my recommendation, if you're shooting 1080, let's go for the 100 megabit and either 24 or 60p, depending on whether you want the film look or live look. But what if you don't want 1080? What if you want 4K or UHD? You have a number of choices here too. You have the same frame rate choices, 24p, 30p, and 60p. Those are the same choices as we have in 1080 and for the same reasons. We don't get a choice of bit rate. The bit rates are assigned, they're fixed based on what recording format we're using. So if we're shooting ultra high definition or 4K at 24p, it's always gonna be 100 megabits. That's just the way it is. There's no choice, nothing to worry about. If we're shooting at 60p, then we have 150 megabits. So really, we're looking for film look, video look, or the 4K mode. The 4K is about the same image size as ultra high def. Instead of 3840 by 2160, it's 4096 by 2160. It's a little bit wider. Other than that, it's about the same. It's a digital cinema initiative compliant format. 
So if you're shooting something that you intend to have projected on a DCI theater, this might be the right choice for you. If you are working as a B camera to a Vericam or an actual film camera or some other camera that's running at exactly 24 frames per second, this might be a great choice because at 4K, it only operates at 24.00 frames per second. Video generally doesn't. Generally, 24p video runs at 23.98 frames per second. To be more precise, 23.976. And that's what we're used to working with, and that's what all the nonlinear editors are set up for. So if you're combining footage with other cameras, you're probably gonna wanna go with ultra high def 24p instead of the 4K 24p. If you're working with matching a perfectly synced 24.00 frame per second project, then that's what the 4K format would be for. Lastly, decide whether you want the normal view or the fast scan. Now the normal view is the widest field of view that you can get for each mode, but it's a slower scanning system. So it's possible that you may encounter some of the jello effect. If you're doing really fast pans or, or running with the camera or something like that, you might see some rubberiness come into the footage. So Panasonic developed the fast scan modes, which are basically exactly the same modes, but they narrow the field of view down a little. The chip is able to scan much faster. The scanning rate is so much faster that you get a lot less of that rubbery jello effect. So if you don't need the widest field of view, maybe you're shooting a football game and you really need a lot of telephoto, you might want to use the fast scan mode instead of the normal field view. But if you're shooting an interview and you need the widest field of view you can get, and you know, in an interview, the subject usually isn't running around a lot or whatever, and you're not bouncing the camera. So the normal mode is totally appropriate for that and will give you a wider field of view. So that's how you choose among the various recording formats. You have to determine what your project priorities are. You have to determine what kind of look you want. And you have to determine whether it's a project you want to shoot in 4K or a project you need to shoot in 1080p. 1080p can result in smaller file sizes, faster editing, a quicker delivery, but a 4K version gives you a bigger master to go from, more ability to reframe or do post-stabilization or something. Generally, I say start with the best, start with the most detail and the most information you can get and convert down if necessary because you always will have that high resolution master to go back to. Hope you found this helpful and be sure to check out the other videos in this series for even more tips and tricks on how to use your DVX-200. Panasonic.